My name is Christy Camel, and this is my Boise State University Master's in Educational Technology Reflective Video, a component of the culminating activity for the program. After graduating from the University of Illinois in 1999 with a Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry and Physics and a minor in Education, I began teaching chemistry at a moderately sized high school in the suburbs of Chicago. When I started 13 years ago, I had no formal technology training. I was ahead of the curve with my PowerPoint presentations and was quickly labeled a techie in the department. I dabbled in creating my own class website and was even one of the first to get multiple student computers in my classroom. Fast forward 10 years to when I was presented with the opportunity to begin the Boise State MET program. I jumped at the chance to learn how my love of technology could impact the learning of my students. There are some fundamental lessons I've learned in the last three years as I taught full-time and completed courses at BSU. First, the key to successfully integrating technology in the classroom is to have solid pedagogy. After all, technology is just another tool in a great teacher's bag of tricks. The EdTech program has shown me that the ideas we foster in a traditional classroom setting are the same as those in a virtual setting. Creating collaborative groups of learners that are willing to take risks, shifting focus from teacher-centered to student-centered learning, utilizing current research in areas like learning theory and brain research when developing materials, Making sound, data-driven decisions and always putting the learner first are just a handful of the lessons that were reinforced. I have also come away with a deeper understanding of educational technology. Utilizing an instructional design model to evaluate and design a program, reading and writing my own code, creating graphics that both clarify and teach, and organizing resources used for learning are all skills I've developed here at Boise State. With my strong theoretical foundation, I was able to create a variety of artifacts that show mastery of the AECT standards. Here are just a few. In EdTech 502, Internet for Educators, I got my first taste of writing my own website and coding. While I was overwhelmed at first, I began to see the limitless possibilities for learning to occur in my classroom. The first few projects we did focused on behaviors and expectations that go along with being in an online class. Students were taught about netiquette and interpersonal skills in my first attempt at writing my own code. In the plagiarism scavenger hunt, I embedded video and provided links for students to use to answer questions related to copyright. In my interactive concept map entitled Naming or Inorganic Compounds, I learned how to make hotspots, which students use to access additional information. The Gas Laws Jigsaw activity allowed students to communicate with one another and encouraged collaboration amongst a variety of different groups. Additionally, students were given research questions to answer, articles, animations, simulations, tutorials, and videos they could use to become an expert. In the mobile learning activity, I was able to design an activity that allowed students to use their smartphones to complete a lab activity. Here, students were allowed to use their smartphones to review over acid-based titrations, view a video tutorial on how to perform a titration, and then a Google Doc in order to share their data with the class. The class then culminated in two major projects. My virtual field trip allows students to visit scientists that contributed to atomic structure and fill out their passport with observations along the way. Students could see pictures of scientists as well as click on links to get additional information about scientists. Here I was also able to embed a sound clip from the scientist himself. Could anything at first sight seem more impractical than a body which is so small that its mass is an insignificant fraction of the mass of an atom of hydrogen?
Some pages included video as well as articles on those different scientists. Additionally, students were able to visit two labs in Illinois that perform cutting-edge atomic research. At Argonne National Lab, students can watch a video about the advanced proton source and another on how nuclear waste is recycled here in Illinois. At Fermilab, students can hear about the God particle and see the personable side of science in the Fermi wrap. In my scuba web quest, an entire unit was designed drawing on all the material we had learned that semester. Students are introduced to a concept that is familiar to them already, grabbing their attention. They are then challenged with the task of creating a presentation in Prezi on the hazards of scuba diving as it relates to the gas laws. Students are given access to a variety of materials, including articles and videos, to gather information, and are presented with a rubric to self-evaluate. As you can see, I used a variety of HTML and CSS coding in both final projects to get the rollover effects, links, embedded content, etc. I was also able to incorporate brain-based research to lighten cognitive load by splitting tasks up into smaller pieces and encourage collaboration, which is why I believe this piece demonstrates mastery of the standards. When designing the graphic, how to name ionic compounds, the learners would have had prior knowledge in the form of having seen chemical names already. I wanted to review how the names were connected with the formulas themselves, so I chose to highlight important parts of the formula and include text that was minimal in amount. This helped to lighten the cognitive load, because adding redundant textual information to a self-explanatory graphic will add extraneous cognitive load and slow down learning, according to Clark and Lyons. It was essential that the graphics support FAR transfer, since depending on the compound in front of the student, they would approach naming in a particular way. I envision the graphic how to identify compounds as both transformational and organizational in nature. I wanted to show the steps that needed to be gone through organizational, but also animate the correct order in which to apply these steps, transformational. This inclusion of an outline produced more relational learning than just studying the text alone, according to Clark and Lyons. Since this is a key concept in the next portion of the lesson, you must be able to determine if a compound is binary ionic, ternary ionic, or covalent, because each has a distinct naming scheme. It was essential for near transfer to occur, because the same steps must be repeated in the same order every time. For common chemicals in your home, I wanted to design a visual that got students thinking about the chemicals in their daily lives. I felt as it was important to include the chemical name and formula on the initial upstate so that the students would realize the importance of the chemistry in those compounds. I hoped they would be motivated to roll over the names and formulas to see what these chemicals were in everyday language, drawing on familiar content and context. For students that tend to have low personal interest, including the pictures of the common household chemicals, further engage the students to want to learn more, high situational interest. The graphic covalent compound review was meant to appear at the end of a lesson as a review, so I knew my students were high prior knowledge learners that didn't need both text and visuals as that may be redundant. I wanted to give students examples of compounds to name and write formulas for so that they could self-assess their competency. However, because some students may be further behind in their knowledge, I made sure to include a completely separate page where students could review prefixes but also hear the pronunciation of those prefixes, which I know would help low spatial auditory learners as well as ELL students. My high verbal learners were fine with the original text-only screen. As a review, remember that mono represents one of an element. Di represents two, tri is three, tetra is four, penta is five, hexa is six, hepta is seven, Octa is 8, 
Nona is 9, and Deca is 10. With the writing binary ionic formulas graphic, I wanted to make sure I gave numbered steps for the procedure to show the importance of completing the steps in order, but also show a transformational process by using arrows to show crisscross method. I also gave an example for students to try on their own to see if they truly understand the material. Upon rollover, students get both the words and a graphic showing how to perform the procedure. I made sure to place text close to what it describes and used a link to the periodic table as a representative visual so students know where it will be used in a real class example. In this last graphic, neutralization reactions, it's essential in chemistry to see patterns and realize that reactions have similarities to one another. This makes the task of classifying and predicting products much less daunting. I wanted a visual that would allow students to click through at their own pace to see the process. I included a sequence illustration where each part was discussed individually first, then a transformational illustration of the entire process so learners can see the big picture. While going through the sequence, I felt it was important to gray out information that wasn't currently being talked about to lighten the cognitive load. Then all the color coding came back at the end as a review, and examples were given to show students actual chemical formulas going through the process. In creating the graphic states of matter, I wanted to use a concrete image, the crystal, liquid water in the beaker, and gaseous bromine as a hook, and upon rollover, students would put on their particle goggles and visualize these states at the particle level. Since students don't have access to equipment to see atoms, I wanted to show the large and then the small, the macro and the micro, so they could tie the two together. I felt it would be best as an organizational visual, and I displayed graphics and their descriptions close to one another. Adding on the terminology for changes in the states of matter in the form of a map organizer helps students to see the interconnectedness of the ideas. In the Boyle's Law graphic, I wanted students to see a concept they were already familiar with, the changing size of a balloon, and tie it back to how the individual gas molecules were behaving. By students clicking on each pressure, they could see a distinct volume reading, but also a balloon changing in volume. Then I wanted them to draw a conclusion based on the graph and size of the balloon. By including this as an introductory graphic, students can use it as a hook on which they can refer back to as they are learning the math behind the concept. In this Charles Law graphic, I wanted to use interpretive graphics and dynamic simulations to model principles in action, according to Clark and Lyons 2004. The transformational graphic showing changing volume as temperature changes made students think about how one affected the other. I also felt it was necessary to include a set of questions to engage the learners in the material. It wasn't enough to state the change, for example, as the balloon gets hotter, its volume gets larger, but to relate that back to the particle motion, which is truly the chemical concept. I thought it best to set the lesson up as a discovery learning approach to force the learners to engage. I believe that these two units of instruction demonstrate my mastery of Standard 2, development of instructional materials and experiences using print, audiovisual, computer-based, and integrated technologies. The last article I want to include is my Moodle site, Created in EdTech 512 Online Learning. As one of my school board's goals is anywhere, anytime learning, this was a great way to sum up all of the information I learned throughout my time in the MET program and tie it to my job as a classroom teacher. Since attending the INACAL Virtual School Symposium in 2009, I've wanted to create both a hybrid chemistry course and a fully online chemistry course. This particular course was developed as a companion to my traditional class, but has been expanded to function as a credit recovery course for students in the district. Effectively organizing material so that it is not a hindrance to learning is very difficult. EdTech 512 taught me how to hook students in at the beginning of a lesson, locate relevant instructional materials, and present them in a logical format online. I was able to create a collaborative environment where students shared their ideas with one another and created a community of learners. Forums, class glossaries, wikis, embedded content like videos, images, graphics, and links to outside resources as well as formative and summative assessments allow both the teacher and the student to monitor mastery of the material. 
In the future, I would like to expand the course to offer chemistry at a variety of different levels. Boise State has provided me with the necessary tools to create a Moodle site for our student inquiry and research class based on STEM initiatives to be rolled out for the 2012-2013 school year. This independent research class requires that students move through material at their own pace, so the Moodle platform is perfect for this unique setup. I look forward to designing the course and implementing in the next school year. Some of the relevant features of this unit in my Moodle site are grabbing students' attention with a Vokey. Your sub-targets are, I can distinguish between states of matter, I can explain characteristics of different states of matter, I can explain changes in matter. This helps my visual and audio learners. I've also included embedded videos, like this airbag video, so that students can relate the chemistry to their own lives. Here I've listed ongoing assignments. For example, assignment two states and changes in matter. Students needed to pick a vocabulary word from the unit and add it to the class glossary. This can then be accessed by all students throughout the entire unit. Here students must comment on one of the videos that is present in the entire unit. Then they can post to other classmates and give replies to their responses. Additionally, for an enrichment assignment, students can create their own video, again, to tie the information back to their own lives. Here I've used a Prezi to overview the states of matter for the students. This is something that I like to use in order to grasp students' attention, and then students will actually use this later on in the year as they complete their own assignments. You can also see that I've given some links to outside materials. as well as using some of the graphics I had created earlier in my experience at Boise State. I also try to make sure to include some fun videos that really get the students interested in the chemistry. Here, there's a States of Matter song. Students will both be formatively and summatively assessed. Here is an example of a quiz that was created in Moodle for students. At the very end of every unit, I've included a survey so that students can fill out information about the Moodle site itself to give me feedback so that I can make changes to the Moodle course to make it more beneficial to students. Overall, I felt that by creating this Moodle site along with the five units that were required really gave me a good idea of what it was like to have an online presence. I was able to facilitate this course, creating a collaborative group of learners that really depended on one another and I'm excited to make more courses and to facilitate more courses in the future. As author Henry Miller once said, one's destination is never a place but rather a new way of looking at things. This program has been a journey, one whose destination is really just a curve in the road. I've experienced a huge amount of professional growth through the MET program and have become a sought-out educational technology leader in both my district and beyond presenting within my school and around the state. I'm excited to take what I've learned and move forward, impacting the lives of learners through technology on both the development and delivery sides. Thank you to the faculty and staff at Boise State University for modeling what an online community should look like and for leading me through this exciting, sometimes terrifying, always meaningful experience. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed my video. Mm -hmm.